hello everyone and welcome you all in this next class and here we are going to discuss a new topic that is analysis of singly reinforced beam so just like in the previous class we started limit state of collapse under flexor so flexor is mostly common in beams and slab so we are going to see first of all the design of singly reinforced beam and beams are mostly rectangular in cross section a singly reinforced means the reinforcement is provided at the bottom so generally there are two types of problem type 1 can be analysis problem and the type 2 can be design problem see analysis mein kya hota hai hame sari beams ki parameters di hoti hai cross sectional size dimension sab kuch di hote hain uh, material ki strength di hoti hai ab hame use analyze karna hota hai um, and we know the area of steel bars and the effective cross sectional area and now we have to analyze that how much load that member can take so such a problem is called analysis problem whereas in the type 2 that is design problem the reverse case is there we are given the loads that this much load or the bending moment is going to be exerted on the member now design the beam and we have to design the beam means that we have to find the area of the steel reinforcement size of the section and the material strength in type 1 problem that is analysis problem generally we have to calculate the strength or the capacity of the member that is you just have to calculate the moment of resistance that means how much is the capacity of the member in resisting the bending moment that is going to come on it due to flexor so the solution to analysis problem is a single solution Whereas in case of design problems, we have to calculate area of the cross section, kitna width rakhna hai, kitna depth rakhna hai, kaun si quality of steel use karni, kitni diameter bars provide karni, kaha pe karni hai. And there can be multiple solution to one design problem. In analysis problem, you arrive at a single solution. Sare students ki solution ek hi hogi. Whereas in the design problem, every individual can differ with the solution of other individual it all depends on the individual way of thinking as well as the process and the techniques that he has adopted in solving the design problem so you can guess from the topic that we have to do mostly the analysis problems related with the singly reinforced beam and in real life most of the time we are faced with the design problem because when we are going to construct a building loads are given that this much load is going to come now we have to design each and every components of the building so now let us begin the analysis of singly reinforced beam so this rectangular cross section which you are seeing this is the cross section of the beam okay and this b is the width of the beam and this small d is the effective depth of the beam why i am saying it effective because there is another depth of the beam that is capital d and this is the gross depth or the real depth of the beam and the difference between capital d and a small d is the distance which is called clear cover and this clear cover is very very important for the reinforcement bars from getting corroded or getting damaged due to external environment so it increases the durability so we are not concerned with gross depth much in the calculation instead we have to look for the effective depth that's why in the most of the cases you will see we deal with the effective cross-sectional area which is equal to width times effective depth so in this case i have represented neutral axis by this dotted line you remember it that the depth of neutral axis is always calculated from the top and this is represented by the letter x with the subscript u x u and then small d is the effective depth and effective depth is equal to gross depth minus clear cover all right so what can be the possible range of values for the clear cover kitna provide kar sakte hai clear cover 30 mm or it can be up to the 60 mm 70 mm like that so clear cover is the distance between the center of the reinforcement bars and the bottom most fiber of the cross section now let us clean the board and if you look beside this cross sectional diagram of the beam we have drawn the linear variation of the strain 
and uh, here we have assumed that steel has yielded with the yield strain equal to this as per the IS code and the concrete has also yielded at the top with the ultimate strain value equal to this and uh, if the depth of neutral axis is xu then we can easily divide this depth of neutral axis into two parts that is 3 by 7 xu and 4 by 7 xu from the similar triangles uh, based on these strain values 0 0.002 and 0 0.0035 and this we have done in the previous video also and if you are not clear with this you can watch in the previous videos so beside this linear strain diagram we have a stress block diagram and in this stress block diagram we have only included the contribution of concrete in the compression zone and in the tension zone we have completely ignored the contribution from concrete so the tensile load is only registered by the steel bars okay so this is the total tensile load capital T that is going to be exerted on the reinforcement bar so this stress block of concrete in compression zone is shown as per the IS code into the curve that is parabolic up to 0 0.002 and from there to the ultimate strain value it is rectangular so this one is rectangular and this one is parabolic okay and we know the design strength of concrete is 0 0.446 fck how does it came and how does it came we have learned it that fck was the characteristic strength for one q and 0 0.67 fck was the characteristic strength of a structure and the design strength of a structure was 0 0.67 divided by 1.5 fck that is equal to 0 0.446 fck so this is the design strength of concrete in the structure so now we are going to calculate total compressive strength due to concrete and total tensile strength due to the steel and from the equations of equilibrium of forces compressive forces will be equal to the tensile forces so if you look at the compressive stress block of concrete this is a stress block that means to get the compressive force we have to multiply the stress with what area now if you look at this compressive stress block of concrete we have to calculate the compressive forces c and c will be equal to c1 plus c2 where c1 is the compressive forces in the rectangular block and c2 is the compressive forces in the parabolic block to get the compressive force we have to multiply the stress with what area or area kya hogi area hogi b times depth so the value of b or the width of the beam is going to be same for c1 and c2 but the value of d will change for c1 and c2 for c1 d is equal to 3 by 7 xu whereas the value of d that is c2 will be equal to 4 by 7 xu now let us calculate the values of c1 and c2 in terms of these parameters now to calculate the value of c1 force that is because of this rectangular stress block it will be equal to stress multiplied by area stress is equal to the design stress 0 0.446 fck and the area is the width of the concrete and the depth of the rectangular block that is 3 by 7 xu okay now to calculate the value of c2 force we have parabolic stress block from the concrete and due to this we have to calculate the area of parabola and area of parabola is given by 2 by 3 multiplied by width into depth okay and we have done the same thing here multiplied the design stress value of concrete with the area of parabola that is 2 by 3 times b times 4 by 7 xu which is the depth of this parabola okay after calculating the individual values of c1 and c2 we can easily calculate the total compressive force due to concrete and it is equal to c1 plus c2 and after doing this addition 
of both the forces C1 and C2, we arrive at this formula which is C is equal to 0.36 Fck times Bxu. So the total force being exerted in the compressive zone due to the stress block of concrete is equal to 0.36 Fck into B into Xu and Xu is the depth of neutral axis and this same value of compressive force after doing all calculations is directly written in this IS code here and the same value of compressive force after doing all calculation is directly written in the IS code here as uh, you can see in the figure 22 stress block parameter of concrete here it is written if Xu is the depth of neutral axis the total compressive force is 0.36 Fck into Xu multiplied by B width of the cross section and what is this 0.42 Xu this is the effective depth of this compressive force so how do we calculate it let us see it so after calculating the total compressive force the next question comes at what depth this compressive force is acting so in answer to that we have to do a small calculation so we have just taken the compressive stress block of concrete and uh, this is the total compressive force okay C and this is further broken into C1 and C2 and the corresponding depth of rectangular block as well as the parabolic block is shown here so this total compressive force is acting at the depth of A bar from the top okay so how to calculate this A bar so you must have studied a similar type of formula in the first moment of area like a bar is equal to c1 a1 plus c2 a2 divided by c1 plus c2 where c1 and c2 are the individual forces that constitute the total force capital c and the a1 and a2 are the individual distances of forces c1 and c2 from the top so this formula will give us the value of a bar from the top so if you look at this force c1 this force is due to the rectangular stress block and it is very easy to calculate a1 a1 will be the half of the depth of this rectangular block so a1 is equal to half of 3 by 7 xu as in rectangle centroid is in the mid okay whereas to calculate the value of a2 it is a bit difficult because this is parabolic cross section and we have to remember that for parabola the centroid lies at a distance of 3 by 8 times the depth of parabola that is 3 by 8 multiplied by 4 by 7 xu but a2 is from the top fiber so we also have to add the additional distance from the top that is 3 by 7 xu plus 3 by 8 times the depth of parabola that is 4 by 7 xu and then we can calculate the value of a2 easily now after putting all the values in equation at the top of this page that is this equation uh, c1 a1 plus c2 a2 divided by c1 plus c2 and we have already calculated the values of c1 and c2 in the previous page that is this value c1 and c2 and multiplying them by a1 and a2 and adding them dividing them by c1 plus c2 and ultimately we will get the depth of total compressive force capital c is equal to a bar which is 0.42 times the depth of neutral axis from the top okay so ever value of a bar and total compressive force c is also given in figure 22 stress block parameters in is 456 so you can see in the figure 22 stress block parameters of the IS code yourself that the depth of total compressive force in the stress block is 0.42 times Xu and how it has come we have proven it okay and both of these values are also written in this page if you see at the top here under the note it is written that for the stress strain curve in figure 21 the design stress block parameter are as follows c figure 22 and in this case area of a stress block is calculated as 0.36 fck into xu times b and the depth of center of compressive force is equal to 0.42 xu where xu is the depth of neutral axis 
and F C K is the characteristic compressive strength of concrete. Okay, so in many of the code, this width B is not written. So you can write it. It is not written. I have already corrected it wherever it is required. So now this was all about the compressive force and the depth of compressive force in the stress block of concrete in the compression zone. So as I said, you the total compressive force is equal to the total tensile force. So now we have to equate the capital C is equal to capital T. So first of all, we have to calculate the tensile force. And tensile force will be completely taken by steel reinforcement only and it acts at its center of gravity. So the tensile force due to the steel will be equal to the design strength of a steel multiplied by the total area of a steel reinforcement. So the same thing is written here. So the value of T is equal to 0.87 Fy multiplied by AST. Fy is the yield stress and AST is the total area of steel reinforcement. Now ultimately from the equilibrium of forces on the cross section, total compressive force will be equal to total tensile force. And this is very easy to understand that the compression due to the concrete will be resisted by the tension in the steel and hence the internal forces on the cross section will be balanced. So capital C is equal to capital T and capital C is equal to 0.36 FCK B into XU and capital T is equal to 0.87 Fy AST. So this is the last equilibrium equation. And this is also very, very important. Why it is important? We are going to see in the next video for the matter of calculating the depth of neutral axis. So that we will discuss in the next video. Till that, stay tuned and stay safe. Thank you.